hour, I guess. Um, so we have Mark here, and he will talk about um, um, some automatic best of backup restoration. Oh, complicated word. Um, and we will start straight away. Um, so the stage is yours. Uh, OK, the floor is mine. Uh, thank you, Robert. Thank you, everyone in the team of JN Beyond for um, organizing this virtual event. Uh, I was looking forward to being in Portugal now with all of you, but uh, this is a nice initiative since we could not make it in Portugal. Um, so thanks a lot to all of you. This presentation, uh, you can find it uh, at any time on my website on slides.wolweb.be. I'm Belgian, so slides.bodyweb.be, and today I'll make two presentations. Uh, this one now about automating backup restoration, so that you can also uh, participate easily to Joomla testing easier. Uh, and, and later on, we'll have another one about custom tools. I'm a big fan of custom tools. Um, and before starting, I invite you all because <laughs> two weeks two weeks ago we were supposed to have the French Joomla day. Well, actually, it's a French-speaking Joomla day. This was the first time it was going to happen uh, out of France, uh, in Brussels, my town. So um, we had to postpone it. It will happen on the 2nd and 3rd of October in Brussels. The town is the same. And so we will have, uh, contrary to what they have in France usually, where it's 90% or 99% French, here we have a series of uh, sessions in English. So uh, this way, we will be pleased to um, to invite our uh, neighbors, like people in the Netherlands, from Germany, or, or wherever. Uh, but please uh, know that in your agenda, we, you are welcome at our Joomla Day in October, where we will have uh, also English sessions. But let's start straight away uh, here with uh, the presentation. So, um, well. This is me. I give the, <laughs> the link to the present slides. There is also a video in, in French for those who speak French explaining all of this. So I will start with the start. Um, as you all know, the quote an untested backup is as good as no backup at all, right? Um, because you run backups, but maybe, maybe someone ticked something and there is no, uh, the content table maybe is not in your backup. So the backup runs, but maybe you miss, or you don't have the images, or you don't have whatever, uh, or maybe a technical problem. So you should test the backups. And um, yeah, I will just skip this slide to go straight um, <clears throat> to the content. And um, just before starting, I would like to 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 say that I am. This is not a sponsored presentation. I just I'm just sharing my my enthusiasm uh, because this is a very nice solution that I discovered someday. Um, so the only thing I, I got from uh, Nicholas uh, from from Akiba is a free sticker. So <laughs> this is not a sponsored presentation, but it's a nice uh, it's a very nice tool uh, when you want to automate uh, backup when you want to automate uh, backup restoration. So uh, I wanted to share this with others uh, in the community. So uh, I also have other presentations about backups. Uh, in the previous episode, there is an uh, explanation about how to automate your backup and upload them to Amazon S3 the right way. Right? Um, so this is the link. And the topic of the day, we want to have one script to automate them all. So in this presentation, we will see uh, with one script how to restore the backups of all your sites. For example, on your local server, but you can do it on another server, of course. Uh, like in my case, I manage about um, 50 websites. Um, every month in my agenda, I had a note to say, oh, Mark, uh, test your backups. But you never find the time, right, to download 50 backups and install them manually. So here is with one double click, they get all restored. You just go take a cup of coffee, come back five minutes later, and your 50 websites are installed locally. But even better, one day I discovered a little script 
uh, allowing to improve on that and so that we can also upgrade Joomla and update all the extensions. So this means that with one double click, you will be able to restore your 100 websites, to upgrade them all, and to update all the extensions. And then you just log in and you, um, you can test your websites. Um, so there are different cases where this tool is useful. Um, actually, when you go to, uh, so the tool is called Akiba Unite, I give the link right after. Um, on, on, on Nicolas' website, uh, he mentions mostly, I think, uh, mass site creation or maintaining demo sites for people selling templates or extensions. So obviously that's um, a good use case. Uh, but reading that, I had never realized I could use it myself uh, as a simple integrator um, to test whether uh, to install all my backups locally, to test whether all the backups are okay, or to test uh, before upgrading Joomla or before updating my uh, extension. And the good thing is, um, if you do that, then it becomes very easy to uh, test beta uh, Joomla versions and release candidate Joomla versions because in one click you have all your websites installed locally and you can and upgrade it so you can immediately see whether something breaks um, otherwise you never find the time right to uh, to do all those testings on your uh, manually so is this only for Joomla not even uh, even if you made some mistakes in the past like having uh, websites with WordPress, Drupal, Press, Ashok, Magento, Moodle, PHP, BB. Uh, this Akiba Unite solution works for the major CMS. Um, so what do we need exactly to, um, to work on that? We need, of course, Akiba Backup to make the backup at first. Uh, it can be the free or the pro version to take the backup. It does not make any difference. Then we need this famous tool which is called Akiba Unite. And if you have a license of any of the um, Akiba uh, products, then there is no extra cost for uh, Unite is included, right? Uh, so basically, I think that almost all the Joomla or professional Joomla users uh, have a license with Akiba. So it means that Akiba Unite is available at no extra cost for you. Then we will need one central script to launch all the backups restoration. And for each website, of course, one XML file, which will enable us to, uh, to specify how, where we want it to be restored, uh, how, because you can change parameters and all that, we'll see that part after. And of course, you need uh, a server like a local server, but any server would do. Uh, Windows, Mac, Linux, uh, does not matter. Unite is agnostic. Um, so for those who want the links to Akiba Backup, you have the version for Joomla, for WordPress, and for the solo for the other, uh, for any CMS, in fact. Um, and uh, this is the link to Akiba Unite. And now a few screenshots to illustrate exactly what we will do. And then I'll get into the details. So we'll first see what it gives. Um, so let's suppose you manage plenty of websites. Um, you want to check the integrity and the completeness of your backups on a regular basis, I don't know, every month, for example. And besides that, maybe you would also like to check before upgrading Joomla or even updating some, some touchy extensions, for example, you want to be sure that everything will be okay. So with this, it will be very easy to restore, upgrade and update all the websites. Um, so let's take an example. That's a screenshot of uh, a website where there is one extension uh, requiring update. And we see that Joomla is not the latest version, right? Then what will happen when we automate everything? Uh, I've made a, a little video um, of uh, the script working. So I won't show the, 
92 seconds of the video uh, here, just uh, the beginning. So let's see when I when you launch the script, you will get this. First, the script will uh, unzip, extract your backup file. So here the screen does not move much. It's still unzipping, extracting. Well, we see a new line, it's extracting. And then somehow it will go very fast. It's uh, installing your website and now it's already busy with the second website. So here what we've just seen under our eyes is a website being automatically restored and upgraded and all extensions updated with one double click. So that's our goal to have something like that. Now it doesn't matter if you have two websites or 1000 websites to uh, install, it will be just the same. So I skip the rest of the video because actually it's the same story. And so what you have after when you log in on your website, you log in and you see that the extension, uh, there is no update available for the extension. So it has been correctly updated. And at the time I made the screenshot, it was the latest Joomla version. So this is the goal. Now let's see how it works. So um, for any further question, <laughs> uh, you can always uh, refer to the uh, Akiba UNI documentation. Um, as you might know, uh, Nicolas makes very detailed um, documentation. So please read the fucking manual if you, if you need something specific. Um, so let's say I download it from the web, maybe I will show the website. Right, so Akiba Unite here with all the documentation. So you just download it and you unzip it on your local server. So in this presentation, I have created a folder named Akiba underscore Unite. You can choose your own folder name, of course. Um, my local server being XAM for Windows. Uh, the root on my computer is C XAM HT docs. Uh, so in my case, it means that the complete path is C XAM HT docs, Akiba underscore U. That's the first thing. Um, now for every website, I will create an XML file that you will put in the same folder as Akiba Unite, right? Um, is the easiest way. So what will this XML file look like um, for a local backup file? I'm saying a local backup file, so JPA is the standard format for Akiba backup, because afterwards we will see you can also, you don't even have to download your backup file on your computer. You could also directly uh, refer to, for example, Amazon S3 if you upload it, your backup automatically to the cloud. Right? So, but here I take the most simple case first, which is um, a backup file being on the same on the same computer. So we have a little XML file, not very long, and it's quite obvious when you will read the content what you should put in there. But um, I would just want it, to, I want to read every line here. I will just highlight um, the most uh, important uh, parameters. So, um, in my case, I put all the backup files in a subfolder. So, Akiba Unite was in Akiba underscore Unite folder. I create a subfolder demo backups. Right? Or choose your own name. Um, so, um, this means that every backup has a name, of course, like here, one demo.jpa. So this means, this is why in my file, I will put the parameter package uh, to demo backups slash one demo.jpa, right? So you just say to the script where your local backup is. Another parameter is the absolute path. So I can say, where do I want? Now we've just said, where is my backup? And now I'm going to say, but where do I want it to be restored? 
Um, and to do this is the absolute pass parameter. So, okay, in my case, I say that I, I will create an Akiba Unite output um, directory and with a subfolder called one demo. Again, you choose whatever you like that makes sense according to the name of your website. Um, then there are other parameters, um, and some of them can depend on, on the CMS you are restoring, right? So here I'm focusing on Joomla, of course, because it's the best CMS, you all know. Um, so the parameters which will be interesting for us are the admin ID. So you have to tell the script what the uh, super user ID is, because the script has no other way of knowing. Right, so this is the first parameter, admin, admin ID. Then we have um, admin user, because you can take advantage of the reinstallation to change some parameters of the website. So for example, you can change the name of the user. You can also change the email. And last but not least, uh, you can change the password. So like in my case, given the fact that I'm not restoring on the remote server, but on my local server, uh, actually, I take advantage of this to put admin, admin uh, as uh, login and password for all the websites. So when I want to test locally, I don't have to bother and, and, and look for that uh, random 20 characters passwords on, uh, that I have for all websites. Um, so that's, that's very convenient to be uh, able to change the um, uh, the passwords on the fly. Uh, what do we have? Um, when I first discovered the tool, I was already so amazed that I could automate the backup restoration for all my websites in one double click. But then there remained a few uh, extras because on all my live websites, SSL is enforced. So you have HTTPS, right? Um, so I had to manually uh, go to configuration to disable force SSL. Um, I also had to manually remove php.me. I had to remove manually the HT password, for example, that I had on the administrator uh, directory folder, uh, etc. So I was already happy, but um, I gave the feedback to Nicolas. Oh, is there a solution to um, automate that as well? So um, he made a new version um, to uh, include those parameters. So now, since well, more than one year, uh, you can uh, even change those parameters directly in, in your excellent form. Um, so thanks, Nicolas, for the uh, excellent follow-up. Uh, then, of course, um, in this XML file, we will have to say, uh, where the database um, will be. So that's the DB name parameter. And like in my case, um, if I restore 50 websites today, I will uh, tend to, pre to give the same prefix to it, do as you wish, but I tend to give the same prefix to all the websites I will install today, because then it's very easy in PHP, my admin, for example, they are gathered, uh, it's easier to manage, but you can give, of course, any uh, database name. Um, and that's it, right? Um, I've highlighted the most important parameters in that XML file for uh, a backup file, which was on your local server. But now you can also do that directly with a backup file being on Amazon S3. So you don't even have to download your backup first, right? So, of course, the XML file will be similar because uh, some parts are common, but we will have some extra information like S3 information. Um, so, again, there, when I first tried to use it, uh, the uh, Akiba Unite was still using the version two of the API of Amazon S3. So uh, given the region I was using, namely Germany, um, 
I, it, it was not working. So again, Nicolas made uh, improved on it and made a new version with the latest uh, API. So this means that I can present um, those slides and that we also have uh, the Amazon S3 integration. So what is the script now to automate them all? Um, the principle is easy, as I already mentioned, uh, is just with one line that we will restore all our all of our websites. So basically, on your server, you have a unite uh, uh that you will execute, saying where you put your central configuration, my website dot XML, right, which will contain the information of all the websites. Um, well, that's the difference between the uh, four series of Akiba Unite uh, compared to the, the past. Now that we have the file format, everything is in one file, so it makes it easier to, to manage for, for you and for me. Um, so, of course, how, how to launch that command line uh, if you're a Linux user know that that you don't need my help to uh, to know how to run a script uh if you're a mac user uh well you also know how, how to do it if the php is pre-installed so i write it uh here and on windows i was like oh how can i launch a command line on my uh, windows computer I, I could do it on my uh, distant linux servers but i had never had the occasion to do it on my Windows uh, machine. So actually, it's, it's very easy. You, you just run, uh, open the command line. Uh, you go to the PHP directory of your local server. So like in my case, it was uh, C, XAMPP, PHP. And then you type the following command, PHP uh, space, and you type, um, the the path and the name of unite.far uh, space my website .xml. Um, then of course if you have many websites to restore um, you will want to uh, create a batch file so that you can directly uh, make it for all the websites then it will be easier, maybe sometimes you just want to, uh, to restore 10 websites, maybe you want to restore another time all of your websites. Um, so actually, we, um, we can go one step further. Um, so far, I haven't spoken about the upgrade and the update, right? So one day, I, I discovered that there was a, a little script uh cli update uh which you should not use on production site because uh it's not meant it can have side effects but uh like here for our testing purposes testing whether the backups are okay testing uh whether the upgrade works fine whether there is no conflict with the next Duma version for example uh making the update of the extensions if it's just for testing purposes anyway, then you're just fine. You can use a script. Um, so the script is available on GitHub. Uh, and this is the link, cli-update. And you can put that file uh, in the same folder as the unite.far file. So as I was saying, it's this update.php is uh, somehow experimental, so I give more information, but go and see for yourself. There is also, there was also um, a Google Summer of Code project about uh, CLI update. I, 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 don't, I did not follow that topic, so uh, maybe I should uh, have a little chat with uh, some people there, Robert, uh, animating this, uh, this session, for example, to know uh, what came out of it? Uh, have things been improved since then for Juma 3? Is something ready for Juma 4? I don't know exactly. That's an interesting topic, but it goes beyond um, 
what uh, I wanted to say today because there is already a lot. Um, so now there are three parts in the batch file. Um, so I will give the full batch file in two versions uh, right after, but I will already highlight the most important lines uh, in those files. So as we have already seen, uh, the simple command to restore the website is just, is just php unite.far and the name of your XML file. Right? Then if we want to use that update.php file on those uh, websites, which I have just restored, I will first need to copy that file in the CLI folder of the website I've just restored. So this is the meaning of this line here, where I copy uh, the update PHP file in uh, the folder uh, being one demo of this website, CLI update PHP. And then I can again run two uh, command lines, one, so calling update.php, one with the option uh, extensions, so it means that I update all extensions, and the second time with the option core, I'm grading Joomla. Uh, the order is important in the sense, but it is not specific to this batch file or restoration file. As you, if you run websites, whatever the CMS, you should always update your extensions before upgrading the CMS. Because sometimes some um, extensions suddenly realize that they have a big bug, that people have a blank page when they refresh their website after an upgrade of the CMS, and so they make a patch. So if you update the extensions before, you include the fixes uh, of the extensions uh, developer if they have uh, some issue with the new CMS version. So that's why I put this order extensions first and core after. Um, so this is the global batch file. You just copy paste it. You adapt it for, of course, for your, uh, the name of your website. And here I've made a simple case with two, two websites that I will restore, right? One demo.xml and two demo.xml. Of course, if you have 100 websites, you don't want to repeat those lines 100 times, right? So that's a second version of this batch file. Uh, that's a batch file for Windows. Um, maybe you can adapt it. Uh, your language is different than, than your system. Uh, but for Windows, this is what I use. So uh, this is, you can do it with a loop. So uh, it's easier. So instead of writing uh, every line again here on, on this line, I can, I can write one demo, two demo, three demo, four demo, all the names of my websites, but I only write them once and we, we, we are gone. The script is never longer than this, whatever the number of websites I have here. Um, now, um, after running the script, maybe because the script uh, generates, well, gives you feedback while, while it's running saying, uh, extracting and this happened and this happens, this is okay, or maybe this is not okay. So um, it's not always convenient to read that in your console, right? So uh, you could just, for example, copy paste um, the, the feedback that the script gave uh, in your favorite notepad so that you can read it afterwards to see whether everything uh, was okay, you can check. Um, like in my case, it's not a, a, a supercomputer, but each restore would take less than one minute. For well, restoration, upgrade, update would be less than one minute. Uh, depends, of course, on the size of the websites. Uh, you have some websites which are just uh, 30 megabytes, other websites which are two gigabytes. Uh, okay, it depends, of course, on the size of your website, on the power, on the speed of your computer. But it's just to give an idea, it would be less than one minute, uh, clearly. Um, what can be interesting if, if you are e even a more advanced user is that you can even run a customized query after restoration 
So you can create a uh, SQL file to suit your needs. And why would you need that? For example, maybe for some reason you want to disable some plugins after the restoration. Maybe you want to uh, uh, disable some stuff. You want to, I don't know, anonymize the users to remove the names and emails because maybe you are doing this to uh, share a backup of the website to some uh, to some friend or to some contractor which will help you on the website because you have an issue. Well, you can, with GDPR, right, with privacy law, uh, you cannot just give access to a website where you see the email and the name and maybe even more of all your Joomla uh, users. So, okay, you could have a, a, a little uh, personalized SQL file which would anonymize all the users. Um, fine tuning, because of course, when, when you, <laughs> when I was doing this, I was so excited, but every time it's not that when you run 50 websites, it's obvious that, uh, on some of them, you will have issues when you restore and not always the same kind of issues. So I'll, I'll go very quickly through those, um, those little issues, but, uh, it can be useful to, for you to come back to these. Uh, if, if you encounter those issues. Um, well, um, of course there is SSL. If you really want to have SSL on your local server, uh, okay, you could, you could do it. Um, configuration.php for some reason, uh, especially not for websites that I did build, but, uh, sometimes are called to to help on the website that uh, some other person had built and uh, you're helping and uh, you take maintenance over and um, okay that's fine and so i will i did not create that uh, website backup configuration so uh, actually some people don't include configuration.php well uh, if configuration.php is not part of the backup, <laughs> then the automatic uh, restoration will not work, of course. Um, while if you do a manual restoration, it would work. So that's why uh, I mentioned it. Be sure that configuration.php is part of your backup. Uh, memcache. If you're on a server where you enable memcache, you will have to uh, uh, probably disable it unless you have, uh, well, you, you need to change it uh, for your local server. Um, the configuration.php, um, yeah, you can even, you can even have a, a customized configuration.php file, which you can, uh, use, uh, for restoration. So that's, if you, I'll give the link here, that's if you want to go even further with that. On some computers, maybe because you had an HTXS rule, or maybe because of some side effect of your, uh, really, of your uh, antivirus software, right? Um, you're on your local host, but it's redirected to www.localhost, so of course your website does not work uh, locally, so that's also um, the trick. Uh, if you use, for example, some hosting companies, I don't use SiteGrounds anymore, um, but uh, uh, SiteGround has a, or had a, a cache plugin. Uh, well, of course, it will not work on your local server, so you, you need to disable that. Um, on some websites, it would freeze in the middle of the process. So actually, just deleting the, the stealth uh, HTXS file and finish the installation manually would be the trick. Um, sometimes you open the website and you would see no image. Well, that's just a side effect of some rules which was in the .htxs file. So just delete it and replace it by the native uh, .htxs file. Um, view tables. I, I had two websites sharing uh, the same user tables. So, um, well, of course, on my local server, the name of the database was not the same. So, of course, it would not work. That's another special case you can have. Uh, the name of the website, the XML file allows to change the name of the site. So um, 
Uh, that's also something uh, that you can read, if, especially if you have multilingual uh, websites. Um, sometimes, yeah, a few backups will not be restored. And then I went and see uh, the files, and I would see that some 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 previous uh, users did create files like uh, blah blah whatever question mark dot txt, and of course because of the question mark, it would not it would not um, be able to uh, to restore locally automatically be stuck on that file. So uh, little things that I discovered. Um, using the, uh, well, of course, if you use um, uh, ACY mailing, AC mailing uh, on your local uh, restoration, if you want to make some tests, well, actually, you realize that you should also add local host to the allowed domains, for example. Okay, so all these little tricks is just an extra that is gathered with the experience. Uh, so I share it with you just in case uh, you would encounter uh, those uh, those little potential problems. Going further, um, actually, even like that, I was very happy. It was good enough. Um, I could I would directly go to the cloud because all my backups are on Amazon S3, so I don't have to go to um, every to connect to every website. So the solution I do use, I'm very happy with that, is I simply go to my Amazon S3, where I have the backups of all of my websites, and drag and drop, I, I, I get the 50 backups, latest backups of my 50 websites, right? And I'm happy with that. The only thing is that I have to, um, um, well, every backup has a name, right? And Depending on how you configured it, but uh, most probably there is a date timestamp. There is a timestamp uh, in the name file. So, um, of course, there is a little manual intervention is that you have to delete the timestamp if you, uh, if you name the website mywebsite.xml in your XML file. Of course, you have to, to rename the, remove the timestamp in the file name. Um, So just just saying, uh, I'm using for, on Windows, for example, CyberDuck to connect to Amazon S3. Is contrary to FileZilla, for example, which is um, uh, widely used. CyberDuck allows to connect to Amazon uh, S3. Um, well, um, so this is how I do it. I do it manually. I download the files or the 50 backup files directly from uh, with an FTP software on my local server. I rename the file, uh, removing the timestamp, and I'm happy with that. But uh, you can also uh, be more efficient when you want to uh, bulk rename all your files. You can use a, a little tool like this one or any other one, of course. Uh, but there is also uh, for people who have um, who want to be to, to go further than me, there is also, as suggested by Nicholas, another solution is that you don't need to download, of course. You could automate the whole process. That's what he, he would do himself, uh, of course. So, meaning that you download from Amazon S3 and you rename, you restore everything with shell script. Um, so, there is a tool, S3 command. Uh, which allows you to list the backups in the bucket, uh, etc. So, okay, you could automate even that part so that you don't have to download manually like uh, I do, and I'm just happy with it. Um, I'm not sure of the use of that, but like on Windows, the little task scheduler, so maybe it could be useful to you. Uh, mail catcher, some people asked me, oh, what if I want to uh, test the mail, et cetera, on my local restoration? Well, there is, uh, for example, a mail catcher here. I give the link. Um, there are also, here I'm focusing, of course, on uh, Akiba Backup, which is widely used and uh, is just a great tool in the, in the Joomla community and beyond. 
Uh, but uh, I also gathered a few other useful tools, speaking about backups and archives. Here's um, I had to announce archive uh, here on GitHub. So some people told me it's, it's a nice tool I haven't used, so I cannot give a feedback, but uh, I wanted to mention so that uh, the presentation is uh, complete. Um, ZP, uh, I was talked about that, and uh, in Teletron remote, yet another tool that can be useful. And uh, also, actually, I discovered the existence of update.php in an excellent presentation made by uh, Andy Gaskell at uh, some Joomla Day UK uh, a few years back. So you can have a look at this because uh, it was giving uh, nice, nice tips, and that's how I discovered update.php. So actually, um, this presentation is kind of part of a series. Uh, it was not written in that order, but it, it, it makes sense to present it like this. So the first episode is to explain how to automate backup in the cloud and to do it the right way, right? Because if on every website you you create for your, for your customers, for example, or your friends, whatever, um, if you upload the backup to Amazon S3, it's very easy. But what you don't want is that uh, a user of one of the websites would have access to your bucket, to your Amazon S3 space, right? So you have to do it the proper way. And that's the presentation explaining um, every detail of that. The present episode is, was about to um, uh, automating restoration and updates and upgrades on your local server. And then the last episode, quite logically, if it becomes so easy, so easy to restore all of your websites on your local server and upgrade them and update them, why wouldn't you just help testing Joomla, right? Every time there is a, a beta release candidate version, it makes it very easy. Because like in my case, I would not, even if I would like to, uh, every time there are other priorities and you don't find the time to uh, pick a couple of websites, upgrade them to a beta or release candidate version, uh, and check whether everything looks okay. But here you can really automate it. It's just one double click, right? Uh, you it's just one command line, and you can test 100 websites and immediately see whether, oh, those five websites are, are, are breaking. It's because they are using that extension. Oh, there is an issue either with, the, with Joomla or with the extension. Uh, in the next version. So um, that presentation is how to become a Joomla tester. Um, so have a look at that as well. The community needs you. Um, well, uh, I'm coming to the conclusion, I think. Uh, my main message is spread the Joomla love, as you all know this, uh, this picture. Um, I mentioned there was a, a Google Summer of Code, GSOC uh, project about this CLI update. So I did not follow what it became exactly, um, but I would be interested to, to know more. So if you have feedback about this presentation and, and know more or know of a better version of that script I was mentioning, uh, just get back to me and I, and I will adapt the presentation. Uh, I'll be happy to do that. So. Um, thank you very much. Um, I repeat, um, all the slides are available on my website, slides.worldweb.be. And there is a video in French about this presentation. And if you have any suggestion of improvement or whatever um, about this presentation, feel free to contact me. That's my Twitter handle, uh, my WhatsApp phone number, my, my landline. Uh, my website and uh, other presentations also are on the slide here. So I think this was the last slide, Robert. Oh, thank you very much for your presentation and um, for, for, for all the insights um, um, about uh, Akiva Unite and Akiva Unite. Um, I, I totally agree that, that testing a backup is, is very important. Um, so, so we are really on on, on the same page uh, of this 
um, it's not really a surprise, I think, for you, um, and not for others. Um, so, um, unfortunately, there are not really so much questions about this. Um, um, so, I think I would um, wait. Let, let's look here. You... Well, indeed, everybody knows uh, why you're looking for the question. Everybody yeah, knows, so, so and there I, is I know one... that it's important to test the backups. Uh, yeah. Everybody wants to do it, but nobody finds a time to do it. And thanks to Akiba Unite, there is a simple solution to automate it. And if it's just one command line, why would you not do it? Then, then you can really have, take the habit of every month testing your backups or or participating to uh, to the testing of uh, Joomla next versions. Hmm. So there's one one question from Peter Martin. So I usually create a, encrypted Akiba uh, GPS backups, and uh, automating with encrypted GPS backups is not possible, is it? So that's the question. So, um, um, well, actually, I it's a choice of mine that I never used this encrypted uh, backup because obviously, if you if you lose that password, even Nicolas cannot hack it, right? Nobody has access to that um, backup file anymore. So personally, I never do it, and I don't. So I don't have the answer because I did not check whether JPS uh, format to encrypted backups uh, whether you can also automate that. But I would say I have a slide giving uh, saying RTFM read the fucking manual, <laughs> linking to the manual of uh, mm. Akiba Unite. So I guess the answer should be there, but I, I don't know mm. myself because uh, I've never been, I've never faced that, that question. Mm. Yeah. So I think it's, 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 uh, it's really a good idea to, to use this for, for, um, for um, uh, testing also for, for testing releases in all the stuff. So in looking and, and supporting the project on this. So, my personal opinion, and this is a little bit, co a little bit colored. Um, I, I know, and um, maybe people will help me. I hate you for this, um, but I think there are also other ways. And and um, um, for example, <laughs> it's only the only one example. So with, with Backup Monkey, you can also automate automate all the things uh, for your daily business. And um, it's another way of doing it, as doing it on, on your on your own. I know it's a service; you have to, pr to trust these guys. Um, uh, but um, it's also a way of doing it. Um, yeah, so. sure. Uh, you, you, <laughs> I understand. You don't want to do self promotion, so you were. No, I don't want. Yeah, no, but I, I think. No, no, yeah. To. But so I, I will tell it for you. So. In, in back so backup monkey that's the um, service you were referring to and indeed because i i, te I tested it um last year when you launched the the service and indeed there is also uh there was and there is still i guess i've not tested recently but an option to test the integrity of the backup right yeah. but um until now because i think i asked a question then back then um you cannot play with the backup it will uh, draw. It will install the. It will restore the website, and give the feedback. Everything is okay, but you don't have a playground that you can say, "Oh, and now I will play with my hundred websites and try some new extension I've seen to see whether it breaks something or not." Um, it will just say whether the backup is okay or not. You cannot double click and install it and play with the restoration. Do you? Or maybe there are plans to do that, but I don't know. No, it's a moment. It's a moment, not. But but your presentation is about automating backups. So and that's, yeah, yeah, sure. that's, So oh, yeah. that's, that's that's the point. If you exactly. if you have, uh, if your presentation would be about um, uh, playing with my hundred websites, then I wouldn't have really mentioned uh, what I mentioned now. Um, yeah, sure. So anyway, um, thank you for your presentation um, and um, and. Uh, so now we are for a 10 minutes break um, and uh, continuing then with uh, responsible web design um, is the next topic. So Mark, thank you very much for your presentation and for your time. Uh, I think you will have a presentation in, in, in two hours.
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, into, in two, two hours, hours about two, custom two hours feeds. About, about custom feeds. So then you will then we have to talk with David or someone else. Not with me. I can't help <laughs> myself. Uh, I need to speak about custom feeds every time, right? There are so many things to say. Yeah, that's right. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and for the others, um, see you in uh, 10 minutes. Yeah, I'll see you. Thank you, all of you, for organizing this.